fishers of men, fishers of men, fishers of men. I will make you fishers of men if you'll follow me. If you'll follow me, if you'll follow me, I will make you fishers of men if you'll follow me. Welcome to Children's Church at North Valley Baptist Church. I'm Jim Carey, and I'm so glad you've come to listen today. I've got a really exciting lesson. You're going to have to listen carefully. It's a little hard at first, but it's an amazing truth. Let's pray and ask God to help us. Dear Jesus, help me to listen carefully today. Help me to learn something about your word and help me to live what I learn. I love you, Jesus. Amen. If you've got a Bible, let's get it and turn to 2 Peter, way in the back of your Bible, chapter 3, and verses 4 through 9. Now remember, your Bible is divided into first books, then chapters, then verses. You may have to look at the front of the Bible and your table of contents, and you might have to look up 2 Peter, find out what page it's on, then go to 2 Peter, not 1 Peter, 2 Peter, turn the page past chapter 1, past chapter 2 to chapter 3, and then chapter 3, we'll start with verse 4. And saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. For this they willingly are ignorant of, that by the word of the Lord the heavens which were of old, and the earth standing out of the water and in the water, whereby the world that then was, being overflowed with water, perished. But the heavens and the earth which are now, by the same word, are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. But, beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. And the Lord is not slack concerning his promises, as some men count slackness, but is long suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Let's think about it. That's pretty, it's a lot of Bible. And let's think about what God said. He said, a long time ago, this world was destroyed by water. And then a new world was created, the world we live in today. And God has reserved that day or that world for a day of judgment as well. There's another judgment coming. And sometimes people say, well, where is the promise of this coming? What is taking so long? Where is Jesus? He said he'd come again. And I want to show you a wonderful truth from the Bible about just how much God loves us. In order to understand it, we're going to have to go way back to the book of Genesis, and we're going to look at some things. I won't show you each verse. You'll have to take my word for it, but you can look it up later. And a long, long time ago, there was a man whose name was Enoch. When he got to be 65 years old, he had a baby boy. This baby boy was born and called Methuselah. Now remember Enoch? Enoch was the last lesson I taught. And he was the man who didn't have to die. He went straight to heaven. This man had a son. Well, Methuselah, people lived much longer back then, was 187 years old when he had his first boy, Lamech. And so you see over here, he's 187 years old. We're talking about Methuselah today. And it's an amazing story. Enoch lived to be 365 years old. And then remember, the Bible said he was not, for God took him. Well, Methuselah was 300 years old when his daddy was raptured up to heaven. Are you still staying with me? Lamech, son to Methuselah, had a boy at 182 years old whose name was, do you remember? Can you see it? Noah. You've heard of Noah. When Methuselah was 369 years old, he had a grandson named Noah. 
All right? So he's living a long time. In fact, Methuselah is amazing because nobody lived longer than Methuselah did. He's the oldest man in the Bible. And you'll listen carefully and find out how old he was when he died. Noah was 500 years old when he had his children. Somewhere in there, he had three sons. He's 500 years old and God gives him a command to build the ark. When God told him to build the ark, it was 800, he, Methuselah was 869 years old. Now don't lose me, here's where it gets good. Methuselah lived longer than anybody else and he didn't die till he was 969 years old. Wow, almost a thousand years. Why did he live so long? Why did God let him live so long? That's what this lesson is all about. Because Noah, the Bible says, was 600 years old when God sent the flood. Methuselah died just before the flood. And now let's put it all together. If you'll look up Methuselah's name in a dictionary, it's amazing. They wrote it in Hebrew and it looked like that, but it meant when he is dead, it shall be sent. What God was telling people by Methuselah's name, his name literally mean, when he dies, I am sending judgment. I'm gonna send the greatest judgment the world had ever seen. And up until now, the greatest judgment the world has ever seen. And so let's think it through. Everything was ready on the ark. Noah had the ark all built. Everything's ready to go. God could have sent that judgment anytime he wanted to, but he waited. And he waited. And he waited. And he waited. He waited for all of Methuselah's life. 969 years, God said, I'm going to destroy the world. But he waited. Now, the Lord is not slack concerning his promises. Some men count slackness. Some people think God doesn't keep his promises. But his long suffering to us were not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Why did God wait 969 years for one more person to get saved? Methuselah called the people and said, you've got to turn to God. They didn't listen. Methuselah's son, Lamech, undoubtedly told people, turn to God, but they didn't listen. And I know Noah was a preacher of righteousness who for hundreds of years told the people, turn back to God. And the whole time, Methuselah's getting older and older and older because of God's great mercy. Do you see how big God's mercy is? Almost a thousand years. But the Bible says that God doesn't really have time. The Bible says that a thousand years to God is like a day. And a day is like a thousand years. God doesn't really have time, but we do. And he was waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting for one more to get saved. Now let's bring it up. Let's talk about the mercy of God. Methuselah lived longer than any other man. And why? Because when he is dead, judgment shall be sent. God gave man plenty of time, 969 years to repent before the flood destroyed the earth. And now we bring it up to date. 2,000 years ago. Remember Jesus? When he got ready to go to heaven, the Bible says, when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he, Jesus, was taken up and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as they went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which said, you men of Galilee, why stand you here gazing up into heaven? The same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as you have seen him go into heaven. Jesus is coming again. 
2,000 years ago, he promised, I'm coming again. But where is his coming? Where is the promise of his coming? He said he'd come a long time ago. Why hasn't he come? Because he's waiting maybe for you to get saved. Trying to give you one more day. Maybe for your mama to get saved or your daddy or your brother or your sister or your neighbor. Because God is long suffering and loving and full of mercy. Methuselah lived during the age of mercy. And as long as he lived, God would not send his judgment. But there came a day where God said, that's it. Noah lived in the age of judgment. When the time was up, Noah was there for the flood. First, God had mercy. But the day came where he said, that's enough. I've waited as long as I can. That's just like today. 2,000 years later, I am living in the mercy of God. He came the first time to show mercy to everyone. He came to save our souls. Jesus promised he was coming again. This time, to destroy the world with fire. God will bring judgment like the world has never seen the next time he comes. When is he coming? I don't know. It could be today. It's been a long time since he was here the first time. And he's waiting patiently, waiting for one more sinner to get saved. 2,000 years later, we're living in the age of mercy. But judgment is coming. And when that judgment comes, there's no second chance. Remember Noah's day? When they cried out as the water came down and the floods came down and they were destroyed. There was no second chance. Once that judgment started, it was all over. Ladies and gentlemen, we're living kind of in a day that maybe you could say is the day of Methuselah. God is patiently putting up with man's sin, all the awful things that are going on in our world. But he's got a plan. He's waiting for you. Maybe waiting for your friend. Jesus will come again. This next time, he'll come to judge the world just as he did before with water. This time, he'll judge it with fire. If Jesus is coming again, are you ready? If Jesus comes today, have you been saved? Or do you want to wait one more day until it's too late? The Bible says, behold, now is the accepted time. Today is the day of salvation. You don't want to put it away. You don't want to put it off. If you're not sure that if you died today or if Jesus came today, you'd go to heaven, you need to get saved right now. And if you can ask your mom or dad and they can show you how to get saved, then I hope you'll ask them right now. And if not, you can look on these videos and you can see I've taken the time to sit down with the Bible and I'll show you how to get saved. And I hope you'll look at that video and I hope you'll get saved today. It's so important. Lord Jesus, I'd ask now that you would help everyone who watches this video to carefully consider their eternity. And God, thank you so much for Methuselah. And God, I'm so thankful he lived so long and showed me the great, long-suffering mercy of God. Now, Lord, I pray that each of us will appreciate that mercy. And I appreciate and remember how loving you are. But also recognize that there will come a day where your hand will move in judgment again. Oh, God, help our loved ones, those we know, to get saved. Help us to be bold to tell them about Jesus. And I pray that you'd move in their hearts and do something in our world and our land and our homes and in our hearts. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, it's time. Are you ready? Let's do a little review. I want you to think about it. Let's see if you were listening well. Number one. Who lived longer than anybody else ever lived in the world? 
Do you remember his name? Mata, Mata, oh, Methuselah. You're absolutely right. How old was Methuselah when he died? Do you remember? What was that number? 969 years old. Wow. What does his name mean? Do you remember? You may not read Hebrew, but I told you what it says. When he is dead, it shall be sent. Judgment shall be sent. What event happened just after Methuselah died? Do you know? Oh, it was that great and awful flood, Noah's flood. In God's timetable, what age are we living in today? Do you remember what we called it? It was the age of mercy. And what is the next major event on God's timetable? The next thing that God says is going to happen. It's that awful judgment. How'd you do on the questions? You get them all right? I hope you did. I hope you listened well. I'm proud of you if you did. And let's remember the name of the oldest man who ever lived. His name was Methuselah. And lived longer than anybody else. Why? because of the mercy of God. Thank you so much for listening. God bless you and your day. We'll see you later.